You're not Leland. Hi and welcome to This Is Gravel. I'm Bobby Thompson, the casual cyclist, and with me today is... Adam Blake. Not Leland. Leland's out. Uh, he's out with family for, for a little while, so Adam's filling in today and we're glad to have you. Um, Adam just moved to Emporia a couple months ago and uh, grateful to get him into the riding scene. So uh, we're going to jump right in. I know, Adam, you just came back from... Uh, salsa ride camp. Where was that at? Uh, Schwamigan National Forest. Schwamigan National Northern Forest. Northern Wisconsin. Okay, Northern Wisconsin. Um, tell me a little bit about the ride camp. I set up, I know it's pretty, is, is it structured? It looked like it was fairly structured. It's got an itinerary every day. Um, generally three rides a day, uh, gravel and single track mixed. Okay. Um, so you got to choose uh, if you wanted to take a long gravel ride or a long single track ride in the morning. Um, set up with demo bikes, salsa demo bikes. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought three bikes and didn't even get them off the rack actually. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, food is supplied. So lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Um, supper here. Nice. <laughs> um, and great atmosphere, campfires every night, camping uh, in a big mode field. And of the hospitality of quality bicycle products and salsa is just top notch. Okay. So I, I did see you, you mentioned the camping. Is it all camping or is, is there whole hotel staying also off site or is it? I believe you can stay hotels. Um, it doesn't uh, reduce your cost at all though. <laughs> okay. So if I, if, I, if I have to do it the weenie way and take a shower and ha have my little pampered uh, bed and everything, I can run to a hotel and yeah. come back. And how badly will, be, will I be made fun of? if I was to do that? I would assume that you'd be made fun of pretty badly. <laughs> um, they did have nice solar showers set up though, so okay. you could rinse off after rides. Um, like I said, the amenities uh, and the hospitality is, is top notch. Okay, cool. Um, what bikes did you ride? I rode a Salsa Wood Smoke, uh, 27 and a half plus okay. uh, carbon fiber frame with their elevated stay. That's a new 2017 model. I rode a uh, Salsa Cutthroat. Mm -hmm. uh, 29er gravel bike, uh, adventure bike, bike packing bike, and I also rode their uh, Salsa Pony Rustler, which is a 27 and a half plus uh, full suspension bike. Okay, I haven't ridden that one yet, obviously. So same platform as the Horse Thief, okay. which has been a popular model, the but with the uh, 27 and a half uh, plus tires. Okay. Liking the 27 and a half plus? Loving the 27 and a half plus, especially in Schwamigan area. It's very rooty and rocky. Um, so the 27 and a half plus platform really soaks up a lot of those ruts, gives you great traction over some of the wet stuff. Um, overall, it smooths out the ride. Okay. Um, not that we're doing a, you know, a bike advertising or anything here, but I am curious about the wood smoke. What do you think about wood smoke? Um, it's a very interesting bike. It's a cross country machine. Um, it's a, they elevated the chainstay mm -hmm. to allow a uh, shorter wheelbase. Mm -hmm. So it's a very punchy uh, bike, definitely designed with Midwest single track in mind. Okay. Um, you wouldn't notice some of the virtues on long sustained climbs as much, but um, some of the rolling hills and the, the steep punchy climbs, mm -hmm. uh, it really felt like that rear wheel was underneath you and you could get up okay. um, pretty quickly. And that's what I've read about that one mostly is, I mean, you're sitting pretty much right on that rear wheel, mm -hmm. so, okay. Um, how, <clears throat> overall, how long did the camp last? Uh, camp lasted Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, uh, good turnout? Yeah, 250 people this oh, year. Oh, wow, okay. Yep, um, they filled it this year too. I saw it online because I was checking to see if I could somehow talk my wife into letting me go. And uh, they do have, it is set up for families also. Very family friendly, yep. Yeah. Uh, Imbo was there telling uh, campfire stories to the kids. They had a kid parade. Um, actually, they had prototypes of a Mukluk 20 inch and a Mukluk 24 inch oh, out really? there that some kids were riding too. Okay. So hopefully next year I can get involved with that. So Yeah, I'd love to uh, get a big group. The more the merrier at something like that. Uh, group rides had anywhere between 20 and 30 people in them. Wow. Um, so a lot of regrouping, a lot of levels as far as riding goes. Uh, never felt like you were ostracized or, 
or out of the loop, you know, a lot of lot of regrouping, like I said. Okay, cool. Matt, next next year? Yeah, that you sounds great. You wanna go? I am. I'm okay. Good. Um We'll rent a van. We can take a van. Can we get can we buy a sprinter? Oh, uh, I'd love it. Ford Transit. Ford Transit? It's cheaper. Buy okay. a lot of the features. Okay. Something so, like that. We can take it to the races too. So when you guys are out riding, we can, you know, the crew take this out and about. Okay. So we'll do the planning later, but yeah, yeah, we definitely need to do something like that. Maybe we can start with fun. I'm sure you all would love to donate to get us a transit van so that we can visit you more often. Um, cool. Well, I'm glad you had a good weekend. Um, you did some camping this week, so you kind of caught the camping bug. Yep. It's that kind of weather. Been camping. It's fall's coming. Do a lot of bike packing, a lot of camping. Okay. Um, we'll get you out there. I'll, 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 I'll try to get out of there. I did camp one night this year. Good. And it was really hot. It was in August. So... <laughs> So I'll, I'll try a fall night. Yeah. So. Well, I had a good trip, but you recently got back from a trip uh, out to Idaho. Yeah. Uh, how was that? So I went up to Rebecca's private Idaho, and we had an absolute blast. There were eight teams in the tournament that uh, the the Galande Quaffing Tournament. There was eight teams there, and once again we came out on top. Um, we rocked it, you know. We we drink a lot of PBR and. And uh, it was a good night. I got I got a medal. My daughters were very proud of this medal. Um, someday they'll find out that uh, it was for drinking a lot of beer and not riding my bike. But um, yeah, it was great. We brought home a trophy, Tempora. Sweet. That that sounds good. But uh, how was the ride? Oh yeah, we also rode bikes. Um, the 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 bike riding up there, the the actual event RPI was is it's really wonderful. It's a different type of bike riding than what we're used to here. Um, you know, we'll get some rollers, but you get a lot of flats to kind of recover between the rollers um, around here. And, and up there, you start off immediately with a, uh, a climb that takes about, I wish I could brag and say I did it in 25 minutes. I think Neil Shirley last year did it in 23, 25 minutes last year. I, I didn't see the, what the time was this year. I, uh, I did it in 35. So for 35 minutes, you're in your next to the lowest gear and you're just spinning your way up this mountain. And you think at times that you can go faster and then uh, it's very washboardy. So you try to click up a gear and you can pedal it for just a little bit, but then you're right back down the gear you were. So you might as well not waste the energy to stay there. And as soon as you get over the hill, you drop down into uh, this little plateau area that um, you're either going constantly uphill or downhill and the downhills usually have wind in your face. So no matter what you have, you're pushing all day long, but it was a cool day too, correct? Started off this year at, I think it started off right around 40. Uh, we were afraid it was gonna be in the thirties, but really it didn't matter. Start off around forties. Um, the high that day was right around 50, 52, I think was the high. I definitely over layered, um, being a little bit of a weenie in the morning because we hadn't had a lot of cold rides here yet. Right. <clears throat> so I stepped outside, went ran back inside and put it on an extra layer. And by the time I was at the second checkpoint, so about 30 miles in, I was completely saturated through the windbreaker and everything. Um, I knew at that point, and I was cold. So I knew at that point that I had already messed up because um, there's no way to dry off once right. you're completely saturated and the weather's not that high. So I did go ahead and unzip and try to cool off, uh, try to allow my body to to dry off a little bit and, and, and warm back up that way by cooling off. It sounds a little weird, but to uh, to get rid of some of the moisture so my body could warm back up. Sure. And uh, by the end of the race, I, I obviously with any race, you get that little adrenaline punch the last 15 miles. And the last 15 miles of this race happens to be short, steep climb, ride back down, ride back down that mountain that you came, came in on. All right. So that was fun. You know, you're hitting Gosh, I think I hit 40 miles per hour and you're going washboardy. So you gotta be really careful that you're on the outside edge, but that outside edge is also the drop off edge. So you gotta be really careful on that. And then you got traffic coming at you. And there's, there's I remember this one corner, blind corner car come around and I get over and then another car came over to pass him around this corner. This local truck, you know, was passing this guy. So then you really got to get over the edge. And there was one point where I always had to come to an almost complete stop. And I mean, you're just the whole time. I dropped my chain, but it was a blast. The ride's fun. Sounds um, awesome. Rebecca does a great job and the volunteers uh, do a wonderful job staffing the aid stations along the way. I mean, pretty much you never want to assume that food and hydration will be there, but it really is. It's, it's there throughout the course, and uh, I don't think you're any, ever more than an hour and a half away 
from from an aid station. So, and that's a hundred miles, right? It's ninety three miles, 93 technically. Miles. Yeah, ninety three miles. Um, you have some rollout before and after, so it ends up being about ninety six, ninety seven. Um, you know, it's higher altitude. I don't know if that phases us or not. It, it's hard to tell. I did notice I was breathing a little bit harder, but I was also climbing a mountain. Right. So um, it's, it's hard to tell. But we got out there uh, three days before the event. So we just had a lot of fun hanging out and around, around catching. So. And then we had a 20 hour straight drive home, no stops <laughs> the next morning after the quaffing tournament. So uh, yeah, it was a long drive home. Was this your first year attending Rebecca's? No, second year. Second so, year. Yeah, yeah. So it's a great event. Okay, so Adam Falls coming up. Temperature changing. Um, what kind of ride you got coming up? Um, well, like you said, I uh, like to do a lot of bike packing, um, camping on the bike, and the fall weather is really uh, conducive to that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll plan a few 30, 40 mile overnighters. Um, things like that. And other than that, um, being new to the area, just really enjoying getting the opportunity to explore some of these roads that I'd raced in the Dirty Kanza previously, mm -hmm. um, but being able to uh, dictate where I go uh, <laughs> versus it getting dictated to me, it's <laughs> right. kind of nice. Actually be able to kind of look around and enjoy the countryside yep. rather than just knowing that you have a long day ahead of you. Right. Cool. Well, I think, uh, I think I'm going to slow down myself. Um, I'm done with my century races this year. I think I did, it was around nine or 10 this year and that was definitely more than plenty. So I'm gonna slow down and uh, I think I might tag along with you on a few of your rides actually. Awesome. So um, I, I do own a tent. Um, maybe I could drive the tent out there and leave it to where you think you want to stop and then come back and ride my bike out there with you because it is a big family tent. But <laughs> I do own a tent, so that's, that's pretty much my fault. Matt, what do you got going on? Uh, for me, I think the only ride I have planned as an organized event is uh, the Freedom Fest here coming up, yep. uh, Veterans Day around here. Veterans Day is a huge event here in Emporia. It is, it is. And do you know a little bit about that, the uh, Freedom Fest? A little bit about it, yeah. Okay. I know that Emporia is the founding city of Veterans Day, um, and so that Veterans Day is a big celebration. Yep. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of good bike-centric things going on. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a great day, Matt. Exactly, but uh, that time of year is always a toss-up. I mean, some years you can get like 60-degree days out there. Other years it's like 35. So, yeah. you know, you don't really know how to prepare for it going up into that week. And here you get those temperature swings that it could be a day before and the temperature changes. But really, we're just trying to get out multiple times a week. I know in the early episodes we talked about doing intervals uh -huh. a lot. So we're just trying to get out three mornings a week before 6 a.m. and get a good hour's ride in. and. Do that yeah. for now so yeah i tend to morph more into the definitely the the family centric role during the fall we have a lot of vacations a mm -hmm. lot of trips coming up so i look forward to that every year too so how about we do some of these things that uh called q a q a are you up for some questions i'm ready all right let's do some questions we'll do the magical sealed envelope switch that around there first question does adam use beard oil Yes, in fact, Big Bad Beard Oil, a little plug for them. Big Bad Beard Oil, okay, there you go. Ladies, you know what he's looking for this year? That might be the show title now, Big Bad Beard <laughs> Big Oil. Big Bad Beard Oil. <laughs> what time of day do you like riding the most? Uh, I like riding in the evening the most. Uh, coming with now that the sun's setting a little earlier, um, lights become more important and things like that. And I'm sure that's something you guys will talk about in future episodes. But uh, I do enjoy uh, the, as it's cooled down a little bit. And I'm not such a morning person. Some of those 5.30, 6 o'clock rides are just not for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, I do the morning rides the most. It says what time of day do you like riding the most? I'd say I, I like evening rides the most, but unfortunately, again, schedule, family life, I do most of my rides in the morning and have to fight off that early chill, so. I think I'm a sucker for a sunset over a sunrise. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I, I yeah, definitely agree. There's, we've had some beautiful ones this year too. Would you like to read question number two? How does the change in light affect your schedule? Well, there you go. Change yeah. in light affecting schedule. I'm guessing this was a two-parter that was thrown at us. Um, yeah, we do the, the time change here, Matt. I don't know when. It's just sometime in October, am I right? Actually, it's November this year. It's November this year? Okay. No, so November 6th, I think. Okay, November 6th this year. So yeah, no, the time change does affect. 
Um, pretty much within a, a, a short time after that time change, evening writing is gone because you're, it's dark by six. Unless you do, I mean, you can do the night writing and stuff, yep. sure, but um, it does affect us quite a bit here. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I think morning rides become a little more, I mean, it's dark in the morning too, but. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, even though time change is in November, we were riding a month ago and it was, the sun was up at 6 a.m. and now we're pulling back into the driveway at seven and the sun's coming up. So the days are definitely changing, even though we haven't got to the time change yet. Yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Number three. How does a long road trip affect your race? Well, you took a trip and I took a trip, so mm -hmm. you didn't do a race, but you did a lot of riding. So how, was yeah. that, how, how did that affect you? Um, I think that a long ride, you know, you got to take, uh, you got to do a couple things, especially before race, you have to make sure you're doing your best to eat, not total junk for food. Yep. Um, so make sure you're getting good fuel. Uh, I'm a big fan of compression socks okay. for a long drive, uh, knee high compression socks that just keep the blood flow going and um, I feel like it keeps my legs a little more lively. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, like you said, you got in town a couple of days early. Mm -hmm. I think that's vital for a race preparation, especially is to be able to get in and spin the legs a day after uh, after driving to kind of get that blood flow going, get the muscles going. Yeah, that's what <clears throat> definitely we try to usually get to an event the day if at least the day before, so we can get on kind of ride around just for. I mean, you're talking just 45 minutes to an hour. Just spin the legs. Right. Um, on, a, on a long drive, when we went to RPI, we actually stayed the night the night before in Rock Springs, Wyoming. And I got on my bike that morning before we got back in the vehicle and kind of spun around the neighborhood for a while, just mm -hmm. keep them, trying to keep the legs fresh. So, yeah, definitely a long ride. If you just sit there and don't do anything and expect to be able to get to, to ride well, I, I, I don't think you're in luck. What is it like after a 100 mile ride and then getting back in a vehicle? How do you get stiff during that? To me, the post ride would be worse than on the way out. The post ride, I think, is worse than the way out. No, for I sure. agree. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we, we got up. So we had, we had the race. The race was done by three. And we had the quaffing tournament. So we, we did drink you know, a, a number of beers that night, amount. right? Solid amount. And then we went back and we had a solid amount of beer back at the condo. And then we got up at 5.30 and we drove home 20 hours. And I, I'll tell you, there was not a whole lot of conversation mm -hmm. going on in that, in that truck coming home. It was pretty exhausting just to sit there for that long and your legs hurt and back hurt and neck hurt. And what about you? Uh, Advil is your friend. Yeah. Uh, I think that that just helps with the inflammation and, uh, you know, keep the legs moving constant pit, you know you want to get home but pit stops are are kind of vital to be able to get out and stretch the legs stretch the back absolutely all right uh number four what are your thoughts on going to a race that says bring bear spray <laughs> okay i think <laughs> somebody must have uh i think i saw this on jay's race that's coming up the okay. gravel pursuit um did he, he had a picture didn't he yeah, there was definitely a photo of like okay. bear spray yeah, yeah, in the yeah. bottle cage. That's, that's right. So yeah, uh, I think it's awesome. Jay, Peter, Murray, and Tracy have a uh, a race coming up. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, uh, the gravel pursuit that's up in Victor, Idaho, mm -hmm. I believe, or near Victor, Idaho, um, around Yellowstone National Park. And uh, from what I hear, there's a very good chance of seeing bears while you're out on the ride or whatever. And I'm Definitely, I promise Jay, I am definitely going there in 2017. Uh, hopefully, you can tag along too. I hear nothing but good things about that event. Yeah. So, how would you feel about the bear? Uh, I'm, I'm for the adventure. <laughs> uh, I think that the bear spray um, is just an, another dynamic. <laughs> hopefully, we're not close enough to the bear to use the spray. Right. Right. That'd be the whole deal. Right. Exactly. Just don't get between the mom and her cubs. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? What's with all the dog photos? Yeah, there's a lot of dog photos, guys. Are we talking bikes? Okay, I guess I I mean, Instagram, I, I have been you, posting pictures of Nessie and stuff like that. I mean, you can't have bikes without having a dog, right? Uh, my dog loves, uh, loves riding in my basket on my bike. See, he's got a basket for his dog. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Does your dog go with you on the bike packing? Uh, he doesn't yet, but we're looking into trailers. Okay, okay. You can't fault me for posting pictures of my four month year old dog. So I don't even know where that question came from, but thanks for the Q and A. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Adam, thanks Thank for you. sitting in this week. 
Leland, hope to see you in two weeks and uh, see y'all later. Bye. Bye-bye.